now. Let's keep that going. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise the Lord, church. I don't know about you, but that worship team really brings it in, doesn't they? You're dead inside if you can't feel anything in here. <laughs> it's an amazing presence in here this morning. Well, I'm going to get straight to it. First, I just want to thank Pastor and the administration for allowing me to come up here again and my give thanks to my beautiful, wonderful wife and my beautiful baby girl. Absolutely. They keep me going. <laughs> so, first I want to turn to the scripture. I want to turn to Titus uh, 3, 9 through 11. If you could pull it up for me. It says, but avoid foolish questions and genealogies and contentions and strivings about the law, for they are unprofitable and vain. A man that is an heretic after the first and the second admoni uh, sorry, admonition, reject, just forget, I don't know how to spell, knowing that he that is such as subverted sinneth being condemned of himself. You may be seated. What I wanted to talk about this morning is being comfortable with controversy. Okay. And I didn't put it in my notes, but I feel like I need to mention, I don't mean be controversial, okay? Just, I'm, I'm laying that out there now. Most of y'all know me. I'm a straight shooter. I'm not, I don't beat around the bush, and I don't want to be controversial, but I don't believe in patty cake and everybody and their feelings, too. So I'm also meaning that not just in the everyday sense, but I also mean that in the, script, in the spiritual sense and your walk with God. So what I, what I mean by is controversy is something nobody wants to once or asked for. And normal people, at least normal people anyway, no one really wants controversy. If you do, you're just dramatic and I don't want you in my life anyways. So I'm just being honest with you now. But it's something that is unavoidable for leaders in ministry. When standing on the foundation of the word, how controversy is handled is actually one of the best tests of your pride and humility. How you handle it, how do you handle when people come and confront you about your belief, what you wear, how you're acting, as long as it's for truth, not like a crazy person. But <clears throat> what's amazing about it is just because you're trying to do a good thing doesn't mean that you're going to be recognized for doing a good thing. And so as you move into leadership or deeper into your ministry, we as a church need to stop wearing our feelings and emotions on our sleeves like a bunch of whiny millennials, okay? Just saying, they're out there. We saw the inauguration. Starbucks had to suffer, <laughs> and I thought that was hilarious, but it's not. It's not funny. It's not funny, but getting upset every time someone disagrees with them about doctrine, they need to toughen up a little bit and understand that not only will you have controversy with people in the world, but you're also going to have people with the people you're trying to help in the body. There's not always an explanation. I mean, you can ask the pastor himself. He has to have meetings. He has to have sit-downs and talk with people because of controversies that happen whether it's in your spiritual walk or with one another or whatever it may be, controversy happens nonetheless. So we just need to recognize that and accept it and not think in this little fairyland that we're never going to have problems because we are. It's just going to happen. So they will be fighting you while you're trying to help them. Now, there's a man in the Bible who can understand that very well, and his name is Moses. Ask Moses what happened to him when he started leading the people of Israel out of Egypt, trying to save them and save their situation. He got more grief from the people of Israel than he did from Pharaoh because often the people you're trying to help will be fighting you the most. I can't believe he brought, uh, that what they were thinking, I'm sure, is I can't believe he brought us out here to die. He should have left us alone, kept us back there in Egypt, kept us comfortable, kept us safe. I guess there were safe spaces in Egypt as well. You know, I, I don't know. I mean, I thought it was just colleges here nowadays, but in Egypt, I guess they had their own little spots where it was safe, but that was just, I don't know. And all the while, he is trying to save them. They're trying, and, and they're trying to destroy him. They say he doesn't even know what he's doing. He must be crazy. And you're trying to help people that are fighting you. And, you, and, and through all that you must be, you, you just got to be comfortable with controversy. Because whether you're helping somebody or you're trying to spread the truth or you're trying to spread the word, people are just going to fight you. It's part of the obstacles. It's part of the trials of this world. So... Moses is a good illustration of that as well, but there's one that I like to use the leadership skills for what he did was Nehemiah. Nehemiah is a great illustration of a leader because 
He was building back the walls of Jerusalem that were torn down, which is helping the people of Jerusalem. While he was being fought on every side, and he begins to build the wall with a trowel in one hand, but you cannot become so distracted by what you are called to do in your ministry and not, be, and not realize that you also have to have a sword in the other. So you cannot sit there and choose one or the other. You need to have both hands filled, one with a tool and one with the sword. You need to be able to build your ministry, and you need to be able to fight for what you believe in as well. So the people, a, a sword to fight the people that are trying to kill your destiny so you don't have to have a two-handed approach to leadership. You need to have a two-handed approach to leadership, building with one hand and fighting with the other. You cannot stop building just to be involved in your ministry. As I had said, church, when we receive controversy from others, when being backed by the world, uh, when, you, when you back the word of God and, you, and, you, and you're doing it with the right intentions, you're not doing it to try to hurt somebody or trying to do it to uh, you know, cause controversy in the wrong way, what you're trying to do is, you know, normally when there's controversy getting back at you when you, when you preach the word, when you, when you give truth to someone, normally when you receive something back, it's because it's impacting. It's, it's actually doing something in their life. Whether they like it or not, they're feeling it. So the controversy you're receiving back is backlash for what they may be feeling. And the con- and, and, and thing is, is what we, we forget is that Jesus was one of the most controversial people. He was, I mean, our Lord Jesus Christ was hated by his very own people for just preaching truth and was crucified for it. So why do you think preaching the same truth wouldn't cause a little friction? I mean, I'm just saying, if he was crucified for truth and he was the one persecuted and he was the Lord, our Savior, and then you sit there and you just, you're scared to go and approach somebody about the word, what does that show about your character and what does that show about where you're standing with your walk with God? That should conflict with you. That should make you feel terrible. But, you know, in 2 Timothy 2, through 26, it says, Flee also useful lusts, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace, and them all that call on the Lord out of pure heart. But foolish and unlearned questions avoid knowing that they do gender strife. And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient, in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. If God preadventure will give them repentance to the knowledge of the truth, and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil, who have taken captive by at his will. So what that means is that we, even though we get, you know, attacked for what we believe, and now that we've got controversy between one another, don't be so quick to backlash at them. You know, you got to be able to handle it with the correct heart and the correct mind. You need to be able to handle it with words of truth, words of wisdom. Don't attack them for what you believe. Like I said, don't get your feelings hurt every time someone comes to attack you because people are going to come at you. So you need to be able to handle it with the correct heart. Churches that, you know, watered down churches may have a big attendance, but there's no truth there. Because the reason why they're watered down is because they don't want to have, what, controversy? (laughs) They like being able to just, all right, let's bring in the people, but let's not tell them how to live you know, live correctly. Let's just bring them in and say, oh, we're all one saved, we're happy people. We're all going to go to heaven, but, you know, you can just keep living your life the way it is. Just keep bringing in the tithe, though. That's okay. You know, and, and the thing is, these churches that preach that you believe in one and save forever, those churches will never have revival like we do. They will continue to be a cold, dead church. I would rather suffer number losses and have a, a live church than have a big church and there's nothing in there. I do not want a church that is dead. I would rather have a church that is alive and willing and listening to the word. So let me ask you this morning, church, how many of you here will say there will be a leader no matter the cost? How many will sit here and say they will take the word to the world despite the obstacles? Who will hold a trowel in one hand and hold a sword in the other? I'm willing to handle some controversy for what I believe in. What about you guys? Thank you.